<laughs> Do you feel stuck? Locked into a dead-end relationship? Maybe you're in the relationship where it feels like you're just roommates or like you can't get out. Or you feel like no matter what you do, it seems like you're always addicted to this person going back to them time and time and time again, even though there's a part of you that's like, I don't even want this relationship. It doesn't even seem healthy. A lot of times when people are in a toxic relationship, they are confused. They're stuck not knowing where they are, not knowing how to get out, not even knowing what is going on. Today, I want to talk to you about this aspect of a trauma bond and some of the stages that go into making a trauma bond and giving that progression of getting to the place where you are completely stuck. I want to tell you about the stages of the trauma bond and also how it affects you, how it actually brings you along this progression. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, change, and development. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the seven-day challenge called Escape Toxicity that you can access at escapetoxicity.com. When we talk about this aspect of trauma bond, we talk about where a person gets to the place where they feel dependent on another person, where it feels impossible for them to actually walk away, for them to leave. Like It doesn't seem like it's even a reality that they could actually get out of this relationship. It feels like this is the norm. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is where I'm stuck. Sometimes they'll talk about the idea of where you know logically in your mind, like, this isn't a good relationship. Like, I don't actually want to be here. I don't even like this person, but I can't leave. I don't want to leave. I I still want to be around them. I still want to see them, interact them. It can't actually be this way. And there's a lot of different things that get confusing. So what we're going to dive into today is we're going to dive into the seven uh, proposed stages of the trauma bond and what that actually looks like. Okay. Stage one, love bombing. Now, love bombing is this aspect where it's trying to lock you in. It's trying to build this connection really, really fast. Love bombing oftentimes is very early on in the relationship and very quick. Trying to build a we relationship, trying to build a connection, trying to build something that's like, this is where we're going. This is the idea. We're locked in for life. This is the person that says, I love you on the first date that is, you know, trying to get with you, trying to build a family like instantly. Like there's like really fast pieces of it. And then there's parts of it where they're just trying to align with you. Of like, oh my gosh, like that's the same thing. Like that's my hope. That's my desire. That's my dream. That's the place I want to go. And it starts to get to this place where you start to feel like you've met your soulmate. Like you've met the one. Oftentimes this is where a person is trying to establish quick trust for the purpose of locking you in. Giving you a sense of safety and security of like, hey, we are okay. This is the place that you're supposed to be. And with showering with you with love and gifts and affection and like overt kind of things, you're looking at it being like, whoa, like never felt this way. There's all this connection. And you start telling people how amazing the relationship actually is. The hard thing with love bombing is because of the praise, the gifts, the time, all this stuff, it feels like it's so amazing until stuff starts to change a little bit. And that's where you get into number two, which is talking about trust and dependency, second stage of the trauma bond. And with this, it's the aspect of starting to get there and starting to test the waters. Like, I want to be able to see how you're going to respond when I say something that's inappropriate. I want to see how you're going to respond when I push on your buttons just in a little bit. I'm not smashing on the buttons. I'm just pushing on them just a little bit. I just want to be able to see. And this aspect of like testing the water sometimes is hidden with the aspect of, oh, like I was just joking. I was just teasing. Like it's not that big of a deal when it actually is. And the words and the things that are said are actually very hurtful, but they're hidden under the guise of it's not that big of a deal. They're hidden under the guise of it's just a joke. There's the aspect of testing the water to see what you're actually going to put up with. Getting you to the place where they start to slowly guilt trip you and make you feel bad for asking about why they actually said that or why they actually did that. Sometimes this is where it'll switch around and it'll go back and point to the love bombing of like, hey, why would you even say that to me? Like, look what I've done for you. Look at all the things I gave you. Look at all the time we already spent together. Like, it's like this thing of like everything taken from stage one, it just compounds on it. Of like, hey, like you you owe me. It's almost like the under underlying thought and idea. So first stage is love bombing. Second stage is trust and dependency. The third stage is just outright criticism. This is the part where the narcissist starts to slowly pick you apart, start to belittle you, start to make you feel like you have no sense of self, sense of value. This is where your opinions are scoffed at and where you feel discounted with the thoughts that you actually bring to the table. You might feel like you're stupid in the relationship when you're very smart. When you run companies or businesses, when you do several different things that are like, I am really good at this, but then you come home and you're interacting with him and he makes you feel like an idiot. 
this happens a lot of times to be develop a power, uh, a power struggle and a power semblance of like saying, hey, I'm better than you. Like I'm more dominant than you in these areas. And we see this happen time and time again, where narcissists will be with someone and then try to do whatever they can to put that person down. A huge one that I see oftentimes with money and with image, with power, things like that, is a guy will get with a girl and be like, oh my gosh, if I get with her, I'm going to have her status. I'm going to have like the aspect that she's at. I'm going to have the money, the influence, whatever it may be. And he gets with her and then he's like, crap, like that actually didn't change me. Like I didn't automatically get this osmosis from this other person. So let me bring them down. And so he starts belittling her. He starts to telling her that she's spending too much time at her job, that she's not good enough at it, that you know, she could be so much better if she did something else or just getting her to quit and just rely on his income. And this happens over and over and over again until she gets to the place where her self-esteem and worth is lowered. And then he feels like he can actually rise above that, like, oh, I'm better. So we start this aspect of criticism, picking you apart, belittling you, tearing down your qualities, bringing up these issues of like, oh, you have these issues when you work on this. This is where you're going to see the blame shift come in, putting different things on you, projecting things on you. Like you're like, I'm not even angry. And he's projecting that on you. Like that happens all the time. Convince you that they have your best interest in mind while they tell you that you're not good enough, that you're not smart enough, all in subtle little ways. Leading us to the fourth stage of the trauma bond, which is manipulation and gaslighting. So gaslighting takes it to a whole nother level. It takes lying to the next level. I'm not just going to lie to you, but I'm also going to tell you that what you would just experience, the reality you just observed doesn't actually exist. It's not actually there. I'm going to change it around so you're completely confused. The manipulation is that piece of control of like, I need to be able to control you and control the situation, to be able to control the mask, to be able to control what other people see. Oftentimes, this is where you'll start to want to fight back and be like, wait a second, like, I don't get this. And when you start to fight back and they push back and you fight back even more, all of a sudden we're running into reactive abuse. Then you're starting to feel guilty and then they're starting to isolate you from other friends and family. All this manipulation and gaslighting piece starts to make you feel like you're crazy. Leading oftentimes to stage number five, which is this aspect of giving up. A lot of times we'll look at this as being like the fawn response of just like backing up and being like, okay, whatever. So where sometimes you start to lose hope. You start to give up on fighting the battles because you realize that no matter what you do, those battles will never get won. No matter what you do, he'll always change the rules. There'll always be a difference, a nuance that gets him out of that accountability and makes you feel like an idiot for even asking or even trying to hold that person responsible. You start to kind of like resign yourself to this is just how life is going to be. This is just what I have to do. I just have to continue through life doing this to be able to avoid conflict. I'll just stay, and as a result, there's not really any hope. I can't really leave. I can't really get out. Leading us to stage number six, which is a loss of self. This aspect of not knowing who you are, not knowing the direction you're going, not knowing your hobbies, your likes, your interests. We find all of this stuff start to peel away, and you become this shell of a person being like, I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't even know what's going on. This oftentimes is where you're isolated completely from friends, from family, from people around that could give you guidance, that could give you insight. But instead, there's been a rift that's been put in there from you being with the toxic person. And he slowly built this rift so that you're not able to see them. You're not able to be around them without even saying no. Oftentimes, we find people in this stage where they have no identity, no sense of self, no purpose, no direction. Their confidence is shot, the depression rises, the anxiety is through the roof, and they're just not sure what to even do because they don't even know who they are. This leads us into stage number seven, which ends up being the thing that wraps it all together in a bundle, which is an addiction to the cycle. This time it happens oftentimes with intermittent reinforcement, the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs. And it gets you confused to the place of like, okay, well, now they're being nice, love bombing. Oh, now they're testing. Now they're criticizing. Now they're manipulating. Well, I guess I shouldn't, shouldn't really matter. Like, I'm not going to be able to win at anything. I don't know who I am, who I am. Oh, wait, like I can't, I can't live without this person. Boom. We go back through it and it becomes a, a cycle of addiction. A lot of times when we're working with people in trauma bonds, we're trying to help break an addictive cycle of like how they're actually thinking of how they're processing of how they're going about stuff because they go back, they start to pain shop, they start to get Hoover, they do a reverse Hoover, whatever it might be. They go through the cycle over and over and over again. 
Sometimes you might be at the place where you were with the narcissist and he put you up on a pedestal for such a long period of time and then he pulled it out from underneath you and you're left being like, whoa, what did I do wrong? Maybe if I did this better and you start to chase after that other person, like, let me, let me show you that I love you. Let me show you this. And you start running after this person more and more and becomes even more of an addictive cycle. And you find yourself doing things, stalking, in, uh, interacting on social media as a different person on a different account. You find yourself doing a lot of different things. You're like, what is even happening? It's because you get addicted to the cycle. You get addicted to the trauma bond. It just uh, repeats over and over and over again. Where are you at in your stage? Stages one through seven of the trauma bond, where are you at? If you're at any place on that stage, on those seven stages, you need to be able to get help to be able to get out because they don't want you to continue to the next stage or repeat the stages or do it over and over again. I want you to get free. But you need to understand first and foremost that it is possible to get free. You've been told, you've been trained, you've manipulated, you've been coerced for the narcissist saying you can't be free. Most people, when they're in a trauma bond, feel like they're stuck and there's no way out. I want to tell you that's completely false. We've been seeing people get free on a daily basis as they go through programs and processes to get to the place that they have power and production in their life in all aspects because they're taking control of who they are mentally, emotionally, breaking the trauma bond and getting free. I want to invite you today to click on one of the links down below and go to escapetoxicity.com. That is the first step into putting effort into you to be able to get free from the abuse that you've been in, to be able to get free from where you're at, to be able to continue to move forward in your growth, in your healing, in your change. So check that out today. Go to escapetoxicity.com to start your healing journey today.